Good morning, Church of Praise. How is everybody? Can you arise and let's join our hearts and our hands together as we worship our Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this day, O oh Lord. Thank you for bringing us all together, even though it's in front of our TV, in front of our laptop, in front of a phone. Lord, you've been so good for protecting us, O oh Lord, for keeping us safe. Lord, we humbly, humbly come before you with bended knees, O oh Lord, because we want to declare that you are our Lord, our God, our Saviour. You reign, O oh Lord, you reign, you reign. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming, O oh Lord. Thank you for coming now, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord.
singer, hallelujah. In the presence of my enemies, I raise a
What's up guys? Good morning and welcome to Church of Praise Online. We are so glad that you are able to join us this morning for our online service and we hope and we pray that you'll be blessed by our service this morning. And if you are, we would like to ask you to hit that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and also follow us on our Facebook page for the latest updates on our events and happenings. Now before we move into our announcement, we would like to give you an update on Pastor Clement's condition. Now, as you all know, Pastor Clement was admitted a week ago for a stroke. And the latest update is that he's now at home, he's recovering and he's doing well. He has regained most of his motor functions. And we would like to really, really thank God for the miracle. And we also like to thank all of you for uplifting him in prayer for the last week. And let's continue to pray for him that God will bring on a full recovery. Amen. And for our next announcement, it is about our prayer meetings, our Trailblazers Children Church, and also our Cutting Edge Youth. Now, because of the MCO and we are unable to meet, these services will continue to be on Zoom. The link for these meetings will be either on the screen or in the descriptions below. So do check them out. And now let's pray for our offering. Let's continue to sow into the Kingdom of God. And as usual, we have the option of online banking and also Boost. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you that you have once again, Lord, given us the opportunity to sow into your kingdom. Lord, as we sow into your kingdom, we just ask that you bless every cheerful giver in the name of Jesus. Amen. And with that, we hope that you enjoy the rest of the service. Take care and we'll see you again next week. On the day in which he was betrayed, he took great. After he has given thanks, he broke it. And they said, they eat and offer as you do it, do it in remembrance of me. Shall we pray and give thanks to the Lord? God, we give you thanks for the bread. Truly, thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice on the cross for us. And we want to thank you for what you have done. You will sacrifice so that we can be made whole. Bless the bread, Lord, as we partake of it together.
in the same manner, he said, This is a new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me, says I shall, till I shall come again. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, that you are coming soon. And this cup speaks of your blood that was sacrificed for us. You were sacrificed, you were beaten, you were persecuted, and you shed your blood for all of us for the forgiveness of our sin. Forgive us, O God, as we partake of the bread of the cup together. Amen. Then they went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath he entered the synagogue and taught. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him, and cried out with a loud voice. He came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. Now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and they told him about her at once. So he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she served them. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon-possessed. And the whole city was gathered together at the door. Then he healed many who were sick and with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Hi, Church in Ipoh, uh, Church of Praise. I bring greetings from Jehovah and I especially want to acknowledge my dear friend, Pastor Clement, Brother Gitbelt soon, Pastor Mary, and the leaders for giving me this opportunity to share his precious word at this time. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for Church of Praise. Thank you for the years of, of work done them. Their labor will not go in vain. Bless the people, bless the leaders and the pastors. Pastor Clement, for this day, the Lord will have this known to you. The enemy has purpose to bring forth a destruction for a time such as this. But the Lord will say, I, the Lord, have assigned to you health and healing, and I will establish you in the unshakable stronghold of my peace from now and forever as in Jeremiah the 33rd chapter verse 6. For this day the Lord will have this known to you. I the Lord have launched you out in your prophetic destiny and, and during this time of you uh, going through this difficult time you will come out effectively and healthily and uh, it will be like uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. For eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men, the excellent things that God has in store for you. And in the days to come, the Spirit of God will speak to you. As He speaks to you, you will be restored to your 100% health and back to function. 
for Mary, Pastor Mary, for this day the Lord will have this known to you. I, the Lord, have placed upon you strategically a pastoral counseling, a pastoral wisdom and knowledge and understanding as in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 7 through 11. And I, the Lord, will establish you in, in those things that I purposed through this word, says the Lord. And within your family, I, the Lord, will raise up someone like a Joshua to stand and to serve. Father, we commit this precious people and the leaders of the church into your hands that you'll continue to bless them, keep them and watch over them and build a hedge of protection around the church, dear Father. The fiery darts of the enemy will not prosper towards them. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. As I was praying and asking God as to what to preach uh, during this difficult time that we are going through, not only in the nation, but as a church too, uh, some of us, I'm very sad too, you know. And uh, the Lord just kept reminding me of Joshua chapter 1, uh, verses 5 through 9. Now, this is not my text, but this is the scripture that God kept reminding me. And if you, if you notice in the scriptures, three times, God spoke to Joshua and said, Be strong and be co courageous. And then be strong and be very courageous. And then be strong and and be of good courage. Three different times. The Lord spoke to Joshua. And in Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. God gave a specific instruction uh, to Joshua. And said for, the, for this law of my word will not depart from your mouth. And uh, you will meditate in it day and night. And as you meditate in it day and night, I'll make your way prosperous and I'll bring forth good success. And I feel this is the word for the church for a time such as this, when we're going through this difficult time. Now, when you take, uh, be strong and be of good courage, when you combine these two words, it produces one single word that's called a a discipline in our walk with God, that's called uh, be steadfast. Be steadfast. That's the key word. I entitled this short message for a time such as this, Church of Praise, be steadfast. The word be steadfast or the word steadfast, in Greek it's hupomone which simply means to endure, endure. It is something like long-suffering. In Greek, it's hupomone. In Hebrew, it is aman, <clears throat> peace, aman damai, aman. The word aman, A-M-A-N, aman means faithful, faithful. Now let's examine these words. Hupomone means endure. Jesus said regarding the signs of his coming in Matthew 24 and verse 13, Jesus said, he who endures these things, he will be saved. He who endures to the end will be saved. And then Aman, Aman is being faithful. And we read in the parable of the talents in Matthew the 25th chapter, verse 23, the master looks at the servant and says, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler of many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. So the word steadfast in Bahasa, Malaysia, it simply means kamu Handakla tago, tago, the word tago. Now, my text now, I entitled 
this short message, be steadfast. Be steadfast. My text is taken from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter and verse 58. Paul says here, Therefore, brethren, be steadfast. My beloved brethren, be steadfast. Be immovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Glory to God. You know, in the midst of this uncertainty that we are in, the pandemic, and eventually it's becoming an epidemic. In this uncertainty, in this anxiety, in this fear, and the famine of finance, the famine of job, and a country where the political, uh, there's no political stability, economical downturn, you know, uh, we need to be steadfast. We need to be steadfast. You know, people used to flock to JB so that they can go across the causeway to work in Singapore. Today, this vibrant city of Johor Bahru has, been, has become very quiet. You know, people have lost their job. To go over to Singapore, you have to pay for your quarantine. And there's no guarantee that you'll find a job. You know, many who worked in Singapore and could not go have committed suicide. Many families have become, you know, orphans. Parents are stuck in Singapore. Children are stuck. Many houses and cars have been idling in Johor Bahru, even in the car parks, houses, because all of them are in Singapore, they cannot come back. You know, our soup kitchen, our feeding program in town has got a long line of people every day. Every day, people come and they take food to give to their family. That's how bad our situation is. But in the midst of all this, the promises of God are still yes and amen. 2 Corinthians 1.20 tells us, For the promises of Jesus are yes and amen for the glory of God through us. Praise God. So let's not lose heart. Now what is the purpose of this message? What is the purpose of this message? How can I rebuild steadfastness in my life. How can I be steadfast? You know, friends, there are a few do nots that I want to share with you. Do nots. And as the time would permit, and if you would do this, I tell you, you will build steadfastness in your life in the face of this adversity. Number one, do not stop praying. Do not stop praying. That's the first do not. Do not stop praying. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7 tells us, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be watchful and be serious concerning prayer. Now, prayer is the pathway for the breakthroughs that we are asking God for. Jesus said in Matthew, the seventh chapter, verse seven and eight, Jesus said, He who, uh, it says, Ask, it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it'll be open. And look at verse eight. Verse eight. You know, prayer must be an ongoing thing. It cannot, it cannot, we cannot afford to lose heart just because we are facing this. In the, uh, uh, pandemic. In verse 8, 
For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks uh, be open. Amplified version would say, he who asks, let him continue to ask. He who seeks, let him continue to seek. He who uh, knocks, let him continue to knock. That's why Jesus said in Luke the 18th chapter was 1, men ought to pray and should not lose heart. I want to encourage you, Church of Praise, engage in this activity of prayer. What you sow in prayer will not return to you empty. Some days those things will come back to you multiplied. Some days those things will come back to you with breakthroughs. Therefore, do not be discouraged in prayer. Since March 18 last year, Every day at 7 o'clock, we have an online prayer. Every day, an average of, of 100, 80 to 100 people pray with us every day online. Now, prayer is a movement on earth that will definitely bring a movement in heaven. We often say, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The first step for the will of God to be done on earth as is in heaven is prayer. Is prayer. You know, every time when we pray, this prayer movement brings a great movement in heaven and releases the heavenly blessings that we need. We read in Acts chapter 4 and verse 31 how when they have gathered together, when they prayed, the place was shaken. It goes like this. Let me read. And when they had prayed, that's what we need to do. In this pandemic, let us not be prayerless. Let us not be discouraged. Let us not become hopeless and despair. And when they had prayed, they had prayed. Peter, in the prison, when they had prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken, was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. They spoke the word as to what is coming. Hallelujah. Therefore, do not Forsake your prayer habit, whether it's personal or whether it's together. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Number two, number two, do not take the promises of God lightly. Do not take the promises of God lightly. I often have said everything in this world will be shaken, but the promises of God cannot be shaken. Why? Because David tells us, in Psalms 119 and verse 89, forever, Lord, forever your word is settled in heaven. Forever it is settled. It is settled in heaven and revealed on earth through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. For the word of God, Hebrew, the fourth chapter, verse 12 tells us, for the word of God is powerful, active, sharper than any double-edged sword, able to pierce asunder spirit, soul, bone, and marrow, and able to discern every thoughts and intentions of your heart. As you read your word, it, as you read the word, it becomes a mirror that shows what you're going through and is able to minister to you. Hold on to the promises of God. As I said earlier, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20, it says, for, for all the promises, whether it's a healing, whether it's your finances, whether it's a breakthrough, whether it's a deliverance, for all the promises of God in Him, uh, yes, and in Him, uh, amen, to the glory of God through us. The promises of God cannot be actualized without you. So this is the right time for us to stand on the promises of God. This is the right time for us to claim the promises. David said in Psalms 119-105, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. No matter what we go through, the light in the word cannot be, cannot be extinguished. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Therefore, 
take hold of the promises of God. You know, Isaiah 54 verse 10 says, heaven and earth, uh, you know, um, sorry, um, Isaiah 54 verse 10, for the mountains shall depart and, and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed. The covenant of peace, the degree, the covenant of peace will not be removed, says the Lord who has mercy. Glory to God. So therefore, let us develop a habit of not just reading the word of God. Let's also develop the habit of, of meditating on God's word. Like Joshua, the Lord spoke to Joshua and said, this word will not depart from your mouth. Reading you know, and you shall meditate on this day and night and, uh, and you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. So therefore, do not take the promises of God lightly. My friends, I want you to know Numbers, the 23rd chapter, verse 19 to 20 says, God is not man that he will change. God is not man that he will forget. God is not man that he will not do good to, to, to good as to what he has spoken and what he has blessed cannot be unblessed. Therefore, let's put our trust in God's word for a time such as this. Number three, do not lose your hope. Do not lose your hope. You know, hope, the hope that we have in God cannot disappoint us. Romans, the fifth chapter and verse five says, hope in God will not disappoint you because of the love of God that has been shed abroad in each one of our hearts by the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 13, 8 tells us the love of God will never fail. If the love of God will never fail, so the byproduct of this love that God has upon us is the hope that we have in God. So therefore, if His love doesn't fail, hope in God will not fail. And by the way, hope is a faith factor. Every time when you come and, and hope, aspire, and vision, and dream, hope is the reality of God. Hope is the reality of God. Don't lose your hope. Don't let your hope become hopeless. It's a reality of God. It's a reality of God's power. And the Bible tells us in Hebrew, the 11th chapter was 1. It, it tells us faith is the substance of things hoped for. See, hope is a faith factor. Hope for an evidence of things not seen. And verse 2 tells us, by this, the elders in the past, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, by this, they obtain a good report. Don't lose your hope. Don't lose your hope. Sometimes our hope can be deferred. Proverbs 13, 12 tells us, Proverbs 13, 12 tells us, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But the fulfillment of desire is a tree of life. I always tell the congregation, I always tell the congregation, hope delayed is not hope denied. Hope delayed is not hope denied. Therefore, do not give up your hope. Let me just share with you a testimony as to a miracle that this recently we saw happening. Now this uh, this couple, both of them are doctors. They've been praying for a boy. They already had a girl. This happened about a month ago. And of course, uh, they were, she was conceived eight months ago. And um, they got a, she was conceived and they found out it's a boy. They were just so overjoyed. They've got two sisters now. They've got one more boy. And uh, after they gave birth about a month ago, you know, as they were getting ready to be discharged, the gynae comes up and tells them that the boy has got ear impediment, which simply means he is deaf in both ears. He is deaf in both ears. And the world crushed on them. And they were so discouraged and so disappointed. 
you know. And uh, as soon as they were leaving the hospital, they called me. You know, they're both doctors. Medically, they know what it is. You know, the child is born without proper inner ear. And uh, I told them, James chapter 1 verse 17, all good gifts come from God. With God, there's no variation. This is the child. They're showing you on the screen. And uh, so God will not give you something that's not good. I said, let's hope and trust God for a miracle. I told them, uh, as soon as you're ready, bring the baby. It was, it's during this uh, MCO. And after a couple, I think about two or three weeks later, they brought the baby and uh, prayed for the baby. I dedicated the beautiful boy and uh, laid my hands on the ears of this tiny bundle of joy. I command his ears to be open. And I told, the Holy Spirit told me, the child is healed. So I told the parents, the child is healed. You know, and as soon, the father told me, as soon as they uh, took the child back, the child began to respond to the sound, music in the car. And then three weeks later, they went for their checkup with the audiologist. When she checked the ears, to her amazement, this year is a hundred percent open. The child can hear in both these years. As I said, hope may be deferred, but surely hope will be fulfilled. Hope delayed, is, that's a whole family. Hope delayed is not hope denied. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you, do not lose your hope. And finally, do not at this time of pandemic, do not neglect your witness. Do not neglect your testimony. That's very important. The world is crying out for something that's real. You know, people have lost their hope. Medical science has desperately failed and governments and economy has failed. At this time, we need to stand up and be Christ's ambassadors as in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20. We need to be Christ's ambassadors. We need to bring the message of reconciliation to the world. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Remember Jesus said, you will receive power to become a witness. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall become a witness in Judea, in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and uttermost part of the world. So don't lose your testimony. Don't let this temporary, you know, uh, tough times uh, don't last, but tough people do. Therefore, arise as a testimony. And begin to witness to your loved ones. Begin to witness to your neighbors. And begin to witness to your, to your colleague. And we can do it online. Remember Jesus said in John the 4th chapter verse 34. He said, my food is to do the will of the Father who has sent me. In spite and despite of what we go through. And then in verse 35 he said, he reminded the church. He said, do not say yet four more months, then come harvest. Lift up your eyes and see it is harvest time. The harvest is already white for harvest. Let me share with you a testimony. My friends, somehow this gentleman got my number and called me. And he said, uh, uh, Pastor, I am, he mentioned his name. It's a, it's a name uh, that we are forbidden to preach the gospel to. And he said, I've been watching your message online and I have accepted Jesus as my, as my Savior. I prayed the sinner's prayer and I've accepted uh, Jesus and I, I like to Keep in touch with you. Uh, please help me to grow. My wife uh, still is, is not a Christian. 
Uh, she is uh, the children of Ishmael. And uh, I believe, uh, I've seen, I have an encounter uh, with the word. And I, I, I'm reading the Bible online and nobody knows. Pastor, pray for me. This has happened during this pandemic. The church may be closed physically. The preaching may have closed physically. But the church is still online. It is still powerful. It is still has got the ability to become a powerful witness to the people. Hallelujah. So therefore, number one, number one, do not stop praying. Number two, do not stop, do not take the promises of God lightly. Number three, do not lose your hope. Number four, do not like, neglect your testimony or your witness. Remain in this difficult time as a witness for the Lord. Father, we thank you for this precious people. For everyone who's watching online, Lord, I just minister your anointing over them, dear Father. That which is not complete will be completed. That which is not restored will be restored. That which is not healed will be healed. Every womb that's closed to be open, every cancer growth to be healed in the name of Jesus. And I just minister miracle right now. Wherever you are, step out of the place in the next couple of minutes. Let me just do a virtual ministering to you. Rata Sutta. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, let the Holy Spirit begin to feel you. Hallelujah. Rakata Rata Sutta. Rata Sutta. Shada Rabba Siddhiant Rabba Sunday. <clears throat> Father, we just uphold Pastor Clement in prayer. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, by the time I deliver this message, he'll be completely healed. He'll get back his strength from joint to joint, from muscle to muscle, from nerve to nerve, from tendon to tendon. His voice would come back and Lord, he will be loud and clear. And Lord, all the memories that are awake will become clear. And we pray for the church of praise in April. They will continue to grow. Greater things are in store. I perceive greater things are in store for Father, just bless every one of them. I perceive those that have got skin condition, those that have got migraine. I just minister uh, healing over the allergy, migraine, as well as sinus condition. Rata sutta, rata sutta, shadaraba, 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 sutta. He kandaraba, sutta, rata sutta. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you that you do not be fearful. For I who have started a work in you, I'll finish. And those that who did not have a job, I, the Lord, have placed an open door for you. Soon those doors will be revealed to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, those that are going through financial difficulty, <clears throat> I declare Philippians, the fourth chapter, verse 19. My God will supply all your needs, not according to your needs, but according to the riches of His glory in heaven. Lord, I just minister your anointing. We thank you. Bless the church. Bless the leaders, the pastors. Let the church grow from glory to glory. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, my friend Clement and Sister Mary. And thank you, church. God bless you. Have a great day and better days ahead of you. Fine